All right, uh, y'all go bless. Uh, Petra and Aneska on Jane the Virgin. The last time we spoke, you were running away with uh, some pretty solidified <laughs> sperm in your hand. And this time, you can't run anywhere. No. You're, you're kind of I've better been petrified. <laughs> what, um, I mean, we, we just talked about it briefly, but what was that, getting that script from Jenny like, and then the reaction from everybody else and yourself? Oh my God, I, generally the whole finale script, you mean? It was insane. Because we don't get it much in advance. We get it about a day before we start filming. So we actually read it. I mean, I read the whole thing the first time at the table read, hearing it, you know, being, being read. And the reactions were insane. We were, you know, I mean, normally we're a pretty loud cast. So we, we usually scream and shout and cry and laugh at the table reads. And it's a pretty wild kind of situation. But this table read, we were, you know, there were long moments of just complete silence and shock. People were yelling. There's so, so many things that we couldn't, nobody saw coming. And I consider myself a pretty, I don't know, creative person, but she thinks of things that I would never in a, I mean, Jenny thinks of things that I would never in a million th years be able to come up with. <laughs> and it was just genius. Yeah, I, I, it was an intense finale. That I don't, I don't think anybody um, could have <laughs> no. seen coming, but, but what, what, but what also um, people couldn't see coming was when, um, I mean, if, People had to have watched by now because if you're a true fan, you've already you've watched already it. Seen it. Unless so, you're in a different time zone, and those people have have good a good reason. But then don't watch this because it's going to be yes. spoilers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but we you got uh, there was kind of a, a social media outcry, I guess you could say, towards the end from what I was following when we found out that it was actually Petra that was bedridden and Anesca was actually just pretending to be Petra and I know all this stuff and. I think it actually kind of says a lot about um, you and your performance in that because usually with the villain, I mean, you, you think of, of Jeffrey on, on Game of Thrones and everybody wants that kid to get hurt because he's just so evil. And then you've got... No, I know. It's terrible. <laughs> and then you've got Petra and she's like, you know, she's the villain of... Uh, the villain, I guess you could say, of, of the show. Um, what... I mean, you you could have played her pretty pretty cookie cutter and like, you know, just... just uh, with, with the bad insults and everything else and just being evil, where did you find, or who did you actually like base her off of? Or where did you, did you always know that she's somebody you wanted to portray that had a heart? Well, I think um, early on when I heard that it would just be, when I thought, okay, when I got the pilot script and I heard she would be the villain, I, I wasn't, you know, jumping right into that saying, okay, I, I definitely want to play a villain because I didn't know what it would be like. And then I got on the phone with Jenny Ehrman, our creator, and the genius behind the show. And she, um, she explained to me a little bit about what she had in store for Petra and how you would love her one minute and hate her the next minute. And she doesn't want anybody to, to be one thing all the time. And that she would, be, she would have so many layers and be this interesting character. And I think over the past two seasons, what's really great about Jenny and our whole team of writers really is that they, they know how to write for their actors. So I don't, I think Petra was supposed to also be a funny character, but I think, you know, over time she found places where we could bring in some comedy and physical comedy, and which is my favorite things. And, and, um, and I think over time she kind of just developed into what she is now. And, and I, um, I strongly believe that as an actor you have to, even if you're playing the villain, if you, don't be, if you don't believe in your character, if you don't find a way to justify what they do, then who will? You know, it's your responsibility. And, uh, and that's what's been really interesting for me with playing Petra is even if I don't agree with what she might do or it's stuff that I wouldn't do in real life as Yael, I come, you know, I have to find reasons for why she does the things she does. And Jenny's been making my job really easy with that because she's, you know, been giving her good justifications. Yeah. yeah. And um, speaking of Jenny, Jenny Ehrman, uh, the, one, the one thing I think about this show that, that I like and that I'm sure you, you all in the cast as actors like is that this is truly, I mean, we do know it's called Jane the Virgin and the title character is Jane and that's Gina Rodriguez. But every other person that's on that show has such a deep background behind them in, in terms of the, their character. I mean, you know, just what, what Petra does and she has her own thing going. I mean, you once told <laughs> me that she's like the hero of her own story and it's yeah. because she has her own story within the show, even though it's called Jane the Virgin. Yes. And you would think that you know, it would just be the one character. Like you see in a lot of other other shows where you have the one main character and everybody else is kind of in the background or has mm -hmm. a few 
great lines, but this is a true ensemble. I, I mean, work I, now having a showrunner like Jenny and and knowing that there's that possibility. How how great is it to to like be behind her pen? Oh my, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I mean, it's completely nuts because I think what Jane the Virgin has is also like you said. It's um, it has its lead character and it's Gina and she's you know this lead character is incredibly well developed and Gina gives her you know embodies her perfectly and she's doing an absolutely incredible job, but uh, but it does also feel like an ensemble cast. It doesn't feel like anyone's been left behind or like anybody doesn't have their character completely well built. I mean every like you said it's true every single character has their unique. Um, little things that is a combination of the writing and the acting and our cast is really something special <laughs> and you know yeah. having Jenny writing for you it's it's like it's like having I don't know like Shakespeare writing you a play it's just the best thing ever and you get to really they trust us and they let us they let us play and they let us bring our own things so I mean I think every single person in our cast just knows how lucky we are a to have a job b to have a job that we love and see to have a job that we love where we love everyone. I think that's just an incredibly rare combination that we should be thankful for every single day. Now, uh, you know, and, and speaking on those same terms, I mean, just what Petra has gone through, uh, you know, she, well, she impregnated herself. Uh, you <laughs> yes. know, she speaks that's a great moment. <laughs> um, but also, you know, she gave birth this, uh, this year to twins yeah. and, and she went through um, postpartum depression which we don't really see depicted too much, but Jenny seems to like to tackle all of these with, you know, like immigration with Abuela and, mm -hmm. and all these other things. And, and it's, it's great. And I don't know how she's able to put it in there and make it so, so real. But um, in, in the, in that, uh, the postpartum depression, is that, did you do a lot of research for that? And, and cause I know a lot of people are very sensitive about the way it's portrayed. So I Absolutely. imagine it must've been, you know, that must have been kind of like something you concentrated on completely. Yes, well, as an actor, I feel like every time you get a chance to portray something that exists in real life or some disease or a problem or you, it's your responsibility to tell the story right. And luckily, Jenny wrote it perfectly. And I loved how it was how it was written for, for Petra. Um, I think I, my research, the main thing that shocked me is how common it is. And I had no idea it was so common. And and. I, I also love that the whole Petra storyline is so different from Jane's storyline and what you get in the same show is getting all these different versions of motherhood and all these different things that people can go through and it's not saying what's right or what's wrong and that's the wonderful thing and I think that's why Jenny can, can, can tackle all these subjects that we have tackled on Jane the Virgin um, in such a beautiful way. I, I think she's not saying this is the right way to go about it or this is the wrong way to go about it. I think she's just saying this is these people's stories and people in life go through these things. And and while having these crazy telenovela, amazing things like larger than life situations like impregnating yourself, um, which I'm sure has happened <laughs> somewhere sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but also, you know, bringing very grounded situations like postpartum depression or, or you know, all the other things you mentioned. So I love how she how she handles that. Now, um, one other thing that was thrown at you this season uh, was uh, Aneska, uh, the twin. Yeah, that oh, that was yeah. I did not have any prior warning. I found out with everybody else when I read the script. I thought Petra was running away. <laughs> yeah, that's what we all thought. And then um, you know she brings you this uh, th this second character, which I, I have to imagine is every actor's dream to be able to play. Um, absolutely, two roles. I'm still knocking on wood. <laughs> <laughs> um, now. Uh, but what I have heard that's a little different, I have heard that it's every actor's dream, but I heard that you based Inesca off of one of your cats. <laughs> yes. I want to see what, what was the, the thinking there when you got the script and you're like, this is my cat. Oh, like, yeah, this is my cat. Um, my, uh, so when I found out suddenly I had a twin, I was in complete shock and I called Jenny and we had a conversation and then... <laughs> I kind of felt like something big was going to happen because for about a week before we got the script, everyone was like, so... Um, have you heard anything about the next script? I'm like, no, what's happening? And I already thought I was dying. And then when I got the script, I thought, I mean, I thought Petra was running away. I was like, is that what everybody was so freaked out about? And then I was like, why am I dying my hair? And oh my God, do I have to wear a wig? And what's happening? And, and then suddenly I had a twin show up. Uh, so anyway, when I got on the phone with Jenny, she told me a bit about Anishka and she told me about her personal space issues and how, you know, when anybody comes near her to hug her, she jumps back and yelps and she scratches. And, and um, my, 
well, I've always had about four cats. I'm this crazy cat lady from an early age, actually. <laughs> is uh, uh, my baby boy, my cat Pablo? He, um, I call. He gets the fear <laughs> from like anything. If you move a chair in an apartment or something, he'll get the fear. So I just thought that was really a good definition for Ineska. She gets the fear from everything. Like everything that happens, she's just kind of, and her physicality. Basically, the whole work on building Ineska, uh, I tried to make her as different as possible uh, from from Petra, just making a completely separate character. And, and obviously selfishly just getting a chance to do such a completely different and wild character on the same show is a dream come true. It's nuts. Who gets to do that other than Orphan Black? <laughs> exactly. And I was actually about to kind of bring that up because um, I, had, I had done a few chats with Tatiana Maslany, the, the queen of like oh doing my God. She's every incredible. role. Yeah, amazing. Um, and she mentioned, or she had mentioned to me how how tough it is doing some of those scenes where you know you guys are together or supposed to be together and playing off. Even even though I'm sure you have um, a, a great stand-in with you or, or, or you Barbie, know, um, my wonderful double. double. Yeah. Um, what what um, was that a hard adjustment for you to do once you found out you had the twin? Like, how did you how did you rehearse that? Because I can't ima imagine some scenes where you have to actually, you know, uh, I, I guess hug each other or whatever would be. <laughs> that was the first thing we did. We were hugging each other. That was the first thing we filmed as as twins was the hugging each other scene, and that's when I really realized that um, you don't think how complicated it is. A in the table read when we got the first script where the twins were talking, just it was such a strange experience because I didn't think ahead of time that at the table read I would be reading both. So scenes with me with myself is just me jumping between the two characters between like an accent and like changing the <laughs> physicality of each yeah. one. It was like a really weird one woman comedy show. Um, <laughs> but it was great, everybody was laughing, it was, it was so bizarre. Um, and then on set, what you don't think about is really the, the little complications of how well prepared I have to come for a scene. Um, because, for example, if I'm filming um, Aneshka side first, I have to know what Aneshka is going to be reacting to that Petra is doing. So I have to, it's not like I get to react off anyone. I can, like, I have a partner, I can react off what they're doing and being spontaneous and in the moment. I have to really plan everything in advance. So I know what I'm going to be doing as the other character. So the character that I'm doing right now, I can, you know, plan her reactions off, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it sounds very difficult, though. It's, uh, it's complicated, but awesome. And I think now we've got it down. It, it took a couple of days to really figure out how to do it because, um, Orphan Black is, is the best thing ever. It's unbelievable. Um, and they're very well rehearsed. They have had this in season one. And for us, it was kind of like, how do we do this? <laughs> so well, must, I, I've never done it before. So I had to figure it out. <laughs> it must be some quite quite an honor, though, to have Jenny select you to have you know the dual role. I mean, like I said, it, it seems like it's every actor's oh, dream. The and to best. Have that. I know. I've met a lot of what goes through my mind is just don't disappoint Jenny. <laughs> you know, just like keep it good. I want her to trust me. I want, and I think she does. I mean, having another role like this is is really incredible. Well, it seems to pay off for you because just recently, Entertainment Weekly um, ranked you as one of the top five actors playing dual roles on uh, television. Yes, which, uh, is, alongside great. with Outlander, which is one of my favorite shows. So, oh, so I was just a, honored. <laughs> such a fierce following for Outlander. People just love that show. <laughs> and they love it. They love, love it. it. Exactly. I'm trying to get everybody to start watching it. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's, it's a lot like your guys' fans. I mean, they get pretty, pretty well, smart. That. Yes, that's a good way to describe them. Yeah. Um, now, uh, we we're just talking about some of the difficulties maybe that um, portraying a, a dual role um, is and then how giving Petra heart and, and everything else. Um, we were at an event recently and uh, we've heard quite a few times, you know, in terms of uh, the amount of episodes you guys have, 22. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of... Um, there's a, the, Julie Bone had brought up at, uh, at a Modern Family event how it's so it, it's so grueling doing you know the twenty four episodes that they do. You guys do twenty two one hour episodes. Yeah. How I, I mean we have the best does, crew. <laughs> is it ever though exhaustive, or is it something that you just that is just the you just roll with it and go with? It? I mean, I know you guys have a great cast and you guys are really close. Um, I imagine that makes it easier to go so to work. So much easier. <laughs> but still, then you have you know shows like Veep that have like ten episodes and everything else. So mm -hmm. Is it ever? I mean, is 
besides like the money factor, because you're paid for <laughs> news lines ten, uh, would there ever be a reason that you would, you know, hope to to do a smaller uh, amount or be on a show that does ten versus twenty two or twenty four? Well, I I am. You know, I'm Israeli, so I came from back home. So for me, it's kind of like driving every day to work. I'm still pinching myself. I'm like, where am How? What? This is amazing. <laughs> so I, I am definitely not complaining about the amount of episodes. Also, um, I worked for about eight years before coming out here. I worked in Israel. And there, the shows that I did were 50 episodes a season. So oh. we were filming about an episode a day. Um, so this, to me, doesn't seem like so much. But <laughs> yes, it's of course. I mean you know, there's a bigger budget and we film an episode in seven days and not an episode in a day. Um, it's a lot of work. There's, we have 16 hour days. Um, I think everybody's really happy to be there. Of course it can be exhausting, especially when I'm switching between two characters and, and it, it tests my, my memory actually, because sometimes between filming the Ineshka side of all, all the Ineshka sides of the scenes of an episode, we have like eight days until I film all the Petra sides of that episode of the same scenes. So my double and I, you know, have to remember everything. And uh, but it's it's exhausting. It's hard work, but it's extra. I can't I can't imagine a job that would be more rewarding than Jane the Virgin. I mean, it's really been everything about it. And we do have the best crew, incredibly hardworking, wonderful people. And as close as you know that the cast is to each other, we're the same with our crew and and our writers and everyone. So it's really it's really good vibes. Uh, have you had a chance to be on our set? I haven't gone yet. Well, you should come visit season three. Now that we have a season three, <laughs> you'll yeah, see what I mean. Yeah, no, um, and, and congratulations on that. That that is Thank correct. You. you guys are coming back for season three, hopefully, because if that cliffhanger was just too much, and there's <laughs> no way anyone will find out. If not, we would need a TV movie no. or something. Can you imagine if we didn't get a season three? We'll be like, what? What happened, yeah. Jenny? You just have to write a book of what happened later. <laughs> exactly. Um. And, you know, I, I think the closeness of the cast kind of showed um, you guys recently had an Emmy for your consideration event um, out in North Hollywood mm -hmm. um, where you guys all went and did a table read of the season premiere of this yes. um, second season. Uh, I mean, everybody was able to, to see it there. How, how fun is it to be part of, of the cast and then just be part of kind of this whirlwind of attention that you guys have generated? It's been nuts. I still can't believe it's happening. Uh, when I get recognized on the street, I still don't realize that it's, you know, I still try to figure out how I know the person. I forget that it's from television, <laughs> that I probably don't know them. And sometimes I do, and then that's really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> but um, it's been amazing. I mean, the, the critics' uh, love that we've gotten from since season one has really, I think, what's helped keep us keep us going and and the love that we've gotten from our really loyal and incredible fans is really so motivating to keep us doing a good job and and I can I yesterday I realized I was really so excited and not even because of press I was doing and not even for myself to see the finale but I was so incredibly excited to see what the fans are going to say I mean what they're going to think when they see the finale so it's really like I, I feel like most of us are just really motivated to do a good job and really excite the fans and and see their reactions because we get you know so much live feedback on Twitter now and everything and people sending us memes of people fainting and freaking out so it's <laughs> wonderful <laughs> <laughs> um, well I mean that that event was was pretty packed and um, pretty well shown and I think it, it kind of um, lends to the uproar from last year from mm -hmm. um, from the Emmys uh, where you guys Anthony Mendez got a very yes, well-deserved Emmy nomination absolutely um, He's great and completely deserved it and deserved to win, in, in, in my opinion. Thank you. Well, um, mine too. <laughs> but there, who else I mean, has a character <laughs> like him? I mean, who else exactly. doesn't know? But there's nothing else out there like that. Not yeah. that I know. Anyway, I don't think so. I mean, if there's anybody to ever, uh, you know, narrate the story of your life, who else would you want? No, nobody. Anthony. I've actually asked him to narrate my, um, my um, what's it called? My answering machine. <laughs> 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 I don't think that would give people a kick. That would be really cool. Um, but then you'd have to hand out your phone number to everybody so they can hear it. Yes, so maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, anyway, so there was, there was this big uproar between not just, not just fans, but, but critics um, and, you know, uh, award bloggers like myself and everybody else at uh, how, uh, you know, at the snub. But I, I, even with that, and even that being the big one, 
there's still a lot of awards attention. I mean, in terms of Jane the Virgin, you guys are historic in, in the sense that the CW has never had a show like you guys. You guys are the most awarded, most critically praised show on the Thank network. You. And uh, I'm just going to go over this list. It's going to take me a while, but I'm going to go over this Let list. Let me just, just so you say can hear. that being a snub, by the way, is almost its own like win. <laughs> just being For considered sure. a snub is like, hey, I'm an Emmy, I'm an Emmy snub. Yeah, it's almost like getting an award. And, and you know what? Snubs sometimes turn <laughs> into. I mean, are vocal. The fans are vocal. The critics are vocal. And sometimes it turns in. I mean, look at Tatiana Maslany, who we were just talking about. She didn't get her I first mean, Emmy nomination until last year. Season she three. nominated for every single character she does, which is what, nine now? <laughs> yeah, it's up there now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, Jane has gotten, um, you know, three Golden Globe nominations, one award for Gina, including Best Comedy Series, an AFI winner for Program of the Year, six now Critics' Choice nominations, two for Comedy Series, three Image Awards, three Imahin Awards, uh, where it won Comedy Series, Actress, and Supporting Actress, an online film. Uh, Critics Association Award uh, for Rita Moreno as guest star. We haven't even talked about the guest ah, stars. There's some incredible all ones out there. All of them. You guys won a Peabody, People's Choice for Favorite uh, TV Comedy, two satellite awards, including uh, comedy series. And then some big ones here, the three TCA um, award nominations because they're so competitive um, for a t a Outstanding Achievement in Comedy, one for Gina, and then uh, Program of the Year, you guys are nominated. And probably the most important, you guys scored three Gold Derby uh, nominations, including comedy series <laughs> last year. <laughs> um, I remember last year when we spoke, you'd only been here for nine months. You'd just been here for Jane. Yeah. It was still crazy to you then going to the Globes and everything. So has, has all of this, is it still oh, insane? Absolutely. Oh, no, it's nuts. I don't think I'm ever going to get used to it. Just being in the same room with all the people that I've looked up to my entire life, I'm never going to get used to that. I, I know. And having like, people that I know and care about and good friends of mine nominated or winning Golden Globes. It's just, when does that happen? <laughs> That's, no, it hasn't even been that long. What, I've been here for two, almost two years now, even a bit less? I'm, no, I don't think I ever, see, I never see myself getting used to this. <laughs> well, um, you know, it, it, uh, hopefully, hopefully you, get, you get very used to it in, you know, in your career. <laughs> well, even it after happens a lot. I just hope I never get used to it that I'm like, you know, where I'm, I'm uh, I, I don't, I never get, I hope I never get to a point where I don't care. I don't see that ever happening because I, I've had a, I don't know, I've been acting for about 10 years now. I mean, actively uh, and working for about 10 years in this profession. And I, every single day I've arrived to any set, whether it's a low budget indie movie or something like Jane the Virgin, I'm still pinching myself and not believing that it's real. So I'm, I don't think, I don't see myself getting used to it. Always um, appreciative of it, though. Now, speak, speaking of some of your of your films, and, and we'll go back to my point of the awards, I did want to ask you, though, um, coming from, from Israel, like you mentioned, you've done television there and everything. Mm -hmm. You've done stage, you've done um, films. And then you come to the U.S. and you, you book a comedy, Jane the Virgin, hour-long comedy. There's no... Um, no audience or anything and you're supposed to be funny yes is it as an actor is it what's the transition like coming from you know maybe being on stage and having an instant reaction mm -hmm. to then going and portraying this character on a comedy where you don't know if, if the jokes are landing the way that you want them to. I mean, is that, is that a, a weird transition or a scary transition? Absolutely. I mean, it's a completely different beast to tackle um, television and, and, and you know, tele camera versus stage because I was also doing a Neil Simon, uh, Neil Simon, a Woody Allen play for, <laughs> for, for a while in Israel. Uh, so that was like instant comedy. You feel the laughter. You feel the different different audience reacting to different things every single day. And on something like Jane the Virgin, um, unless you know one of our incredible camera operators, you hear a bit of a snicker. You actually don't know if the joke lands. So many times I'll finish it. You can leave you a little insecure, um, but it's worked out so far. I hope uh, because you can finish a scene and kind of go like you know just a punchline, and then you find yourself kind of going, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Did that work? <laughs> was that any good? Um, so, so yeah, but so I'm always the one going like, was that, should I, 
change anything? Should I? I'm always running up to the director after it's asking for like, what can I change? What can I do? And I very much appreciate directors who are not uh, just going around saying, oh, that was amazing. And like, that was great. That's fine. And then, you know, not meaning it. I always prefer a director. Or maybe because I'm also Israeli and we're pretty direct people. Um, I'll always prefer a director who comes up and be like, no, that was not good. Here's what we can do better. Because the point being there is to really, you know, get the best result. And, uh, and you, you've had very direct directors. Well, and, and it seems like you've gotten the best, um, you know, result that you could. I mean, you you had Emmy buzz for the last two seasons now. Um, you were on our sister uh, site, TV Line, one of their dream Emmy nominees oh. for supporting actress in a comedy. Um, uh, you know, it was amazing. Hope I'm sure you'll you'll make it there again. You know, <laughs> we're big fans of you at at, at Gold Derby. So. Um, if you are nominated this year, if justice is served and you receive an <laughs> Emmy nomination, <laughs> ah. uh, you have to you have to select an episode uh, to send. Yes, submit. I know. So I've been thinking about that. You have any in mind? So here, I'm torn, and maybe you could help me with this. Um, I'm torn between honestly one of the twin episodes where both Petra and Aneshka are there. Um, because that's such a great opportunity to be able to show two different characters, which is, you know, it's amazing. And between the birthing episode, which was really one of my favorite uh, moments in my career since I've started, uh, but also because it was so physically exhausting and because uh, Gina and I just have such a great time, you know, playing off each other and ping-ponging. So I don't know. What do you think? Which one would you choose? Uh, my first instinct when I first saw the show, uh, or yeah, when I first saw that episode, um, I had emailed Joss and I was like, this is, this is yeah, Elle's Emmy submission here. And that was, um, I chapter, didn't even know that. Thank you. That was chapter 36, which was the birthing episode. Um, there was so much comedy in there. You, you know, you and Gina played really well off each other. And, and in terms of Emmy history, I mean, giving birth is, I mean, Lisa Kudrow won an Emmy for, for giving birth in an episode who also had a twin, I think on friends. Um, so there's some, so I just realized some weird connection there. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was great. And then I also think, um, the, the Mother's Day episode was really good for you. It was, it was touching and usually Emmy voters like to kind of give a hug. And then, I mean, just playing a dual role has, uh, it just historically is, is really great. I mean, uh, who's won? Tony Collette recently won for mm, United States yeah. Terror for playing a few different personalities. Um, on the daytime side, there's there's people like I don't know uh, Lindsay Wagner for for drama um, actress one for playing two roles. Sally Fields is one for playing multiple personalities. I mean, there's there's a lot of that, but I still think I still think Thirty Six was you still like the birth. I'm so torn. Was great. I honestly don't know. I was thinking about that, and I, I was thought maybe I'd cheat and like cut the two together, but it really wouldn't work very well. <laughs> I know, you know that that I was thinking. Like I think it was about what five or six years ago where they where they decided that supporting just sends in, sends in one episode. Usually before you could send in two episodes, really, because you were in supporting, oh. so you to give you more screen time, so you were able to send two, and that would have been perfect. That would be great. And then even before that, you were only allowed to send your like a reel, like it, you could send an episode, but only the portions you were in. So you had to. But edit then out I could cut it together, else. though. That would even, then you that could would cut it together. Be <laughs> then I was allowed to like combine. So if we could rewind back to the yes, exactly nineties, and then and just have Aneshka set. walk into the birthing scenes. Exactly. And make it happen. <laughs> your editor, your guys' editors over there could do something pretty. pretty um, they both, they're show. the best. They're incredible. <sighs> I, I don't. Um, I'm, I'm still in awe of how they managed to make the two, my two characters actually look like they're interacting, and and it looks flawless. I don't know how the hell they do it. It's incredible. Uh, let's focus a little bit on on 36 on the birthing episode. What what kind of? I mean, that must have been pretty challenging having to pretend to give birth. I mean, w was that <laughs> one of the most intense moments you've had on Jane? Oh, absolutely. First of all, physically, I was about to faint. I nearly fainted a couple of times throughout that day because it was like, what was it like? 14 hours of pushing. It was just because the entire time, that entire day, we did all the, all the ones on the location of the hospital. So it was all me going like, oh, yeah, and screaming at Gina. <laughs> and so, uh, so that was just physically exhausting. Um, and I had a, a, one kind soul from our crew just run up to me with orange juice between takes because when I was getting a little woozy. <laughs> and so, um, so that was fantastic. But 
so you, I, I really felt, with the help of our wonderful director, Uta, uh, who, that I was allowed to push, like, as an actor, sometimes you get these opportunities to really flex your acting muscles pick, with great scenes that combine everything that you love. And I thought that those scenes were written so fantastically that there was both drama and heartfelt moments, but also a lot of comedy and physical comedy. So it really embodied everything that I love doing as an actor. Um, so that, for me, was... Until that point, until this twin showed up, that for me was my favorite moment of my career that day. That, absolutely. Um, so, so yeah, it was it was wonderful, and also the research. And we had an, an actual nurse there helping me, you know, guide me to what it it looks like to make it more realistic. And and it was it was just an amazing experience. <laughs> and. Uh one of the other great coaches on, on your show, Gina, had just gone through the same thing. Yes, like, exactly. She was giving me tips as well. I know, I know. But again, both birthing scenes, very different, which is another one of the things I love, yeah. like we talked about Jane the Virgin, is that it gives you different, different things because Jane's birth was this beautiful, heartfelt moment while Petra's was this mess of a, like a catastrophe where she was supposed to give birth to twins and she couldn't take any, any drugs, so she had to do it naturally and she really didn't want to. <laughs> it was just this awesome kind of thing and it took I don't know how many hours of her walking around with an IV and yelling at Gina. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fun. Uh, well, if, if fake birth was that physically exhausting, I can't even be, begin to understand what real birth would be like, not to mention real birth to twins. Oh, man. I know. Yeah. Like, the mothers out there, good job <laughs> to all of you. <laughs> uh, speaking of mothers, um, the mother on your show who plays your mother is Priscilla mm -hmm. Barnes, who, I mean... I uh, Priscilla Barnes. I don't, I don't know, uh, I, I think, yeah, I mean, you, you know how much I'm a big fan of all of you on Jane the Virgin, but Three's Company is my absolute favorite comedy of all time. I understand. I watch it regularly, and when I saw her on there, I, I was just like, this is, this is the greatest show on earth. I mean, you've got Terry Alden, the nurse on there. Priscilla Barnes, I, is it is it fun having scenes with her? And then she's got that. that Are you action. kidding? It's amazing. <laughs> it's the best. Also, I what I love about her is they always give her character the hardest physical time, starting out in a wheelchair, then have to, to deal with a hook and an eye patch. And not only that, but they always give her props. So with a hook, she has to like figure out how to, you know, she has she's holding the tiniest teacup in the world and she's got to balance it on her hook. It's the funniest. Just everything about her cracks me up. She's a she's a genius. We have a wonderful time, and she's also just the sweetest person. She's she's the kind of actor who will run up to you after your takes and and you know just tell you how wonderful you are, or just make sure that your eye line is right and really bend over the camera to make sure that you can you know do the best work you can you can give. And she's I I can't say enough good things about Priscilla. She's wonderful. Well, I'd probably take you up on that set visit one of the days. You absolutely should. Out. You totally should. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> I mean, if you think that you like Jane the Virgin now, wait till you see us all together, like, with no cameras, and just see what we're like. And it's the funniest, weirdest, um, most amazing family. I mean, they're really a second family to me, because I moved here from Israel, and I didn't really know anyone here. Like, I had a couple friends, but nobody really close. And, and I couldn't have done it without them. The cast is really my, a second family to me. So you'll see. Um, let's get on to a few, uh, just a few fan questions just to wrap, wrap things up here. Sure. Um, one of them kind of on that same thing. So what would be your dream matchup on Jane the Virgin for Petra or Aneska or both um, oh. as an, with another character? I mean, we know Petra and Jane, that's a great um, chemistry that you and Gina share mm -hmm. there, but who else would you want to see either Petra or Aneska kind of team up with? Well, Okay, non-romantically, I want to have, uh, I want to see uh, either Aneshka, Aneshka Rogelio scenes. Because <laughs> I just really want to see what that weird dynamic would be like. That's what I have written down. I have that I would like to see Rogelio and Aneshka and even maybe do like a spin-off show where you guys solve crimes or something. Just because I think Exactly. I want to have, have like a, the weirdest talk show or something, you know, <laughs> just something bizarre. And then, <laughs> and then uh, 
I think, well, a lot of, uh, many fans love the Jetra situation, which I adore. And a few fans out there were suggesting that Petra and, um, and Jane run away together to raise their children. And I think that would be fantastic. I think that would be a great twist. And uh, we'll see if Jenny goes for that. <laughs> <laughs> Your other castmates probably wouldn't be a fan of oh, that. I'm not, not saying like crazy. eliminate them. I'm saying, you know, oh, as okay. in one of the storylines, not our own show. <laughs> Well, there are I, so I many. I'm the sure name for Petra's spinoff, and I've had it since season one. It's petrified. And that was that was a hashtag on the finale. I know, I know. Foreshadowing, foreshadowing. Yes. Um, for for Inesca, another fan question: Do you have um, did you have a voice coach, or did you just make the voice up yourself? How did you study? The Ineska voice. Well, the Ineska voice is funny. It's based on, as I said, my cat. He doesn't have a Czech accent, though. <laughs> if anything, <laughs> when I talk to my cat, he has more of a Spanish accent. Um, but no, my cat, uh, Ineska, uh, is, <laughs> geez, what have you done? Uh, Ineska is a, it's a combination of Priscilla's accent and uh, some, some uh, Russian friends of mine. And, uh, you know, some of the Czech that I've picked up as playing Petra and having to speak some Czech on the show. So it's kind of a combination of all of those. Uh, and the physicality kind of make her, makes her voice higher because I wanted her voice to be different than Petra's as well. Not just the accent, but also the, the pitch. On that, is it, is it challenging uh, changing characters and do you ever get confused? <laughs> well, not confused because luckily, luckily I, I gave them very different physicalities. So... Petra is so, as well as the wardrobe, it kind of, Petra's wardrobe is so tight and put together and it holds you together and the heels and everything. So, you know, you, I can't play Aneshka doing this and I can't play Petra doing that. Like, <laughs> it just doesn't work, you know? So, <laughs> with like the lip tucked in and the, the fear. Uh, <laughs> so, I actually love that Aneshka was wearing, I don't know if you noticed, but she was wearing heels in one of the episodes because uh, the whole time that she was having to train to be a waitress, uh, she was in heels, and she couldn't stand on them, so like she was always kind of <laughs> falling over. Um, anyway, so yes, I don't really get confused because the physicalities hold me in place. How, how challenging it, and uh, not a fan question, but I, I promise last question. Um, no, how challenging okay. it, though, is it to, because um, that's one thing about On Orphan Black that we noticed a lot, where you have, you have your character, and then you're playing a different character, and then you have to take that different character and make them pretend to be the main character. So you have to give it differences so that it looks like that. I mean, it, it, that must just be crazy to, to even wrap your head around. Well, I think if I had gotten that at the beginning of season one before I knew Jenny very well, uh, that would have been very confusing. But I, it was, it was, I think we all felt that um, it would work the best if, uh, you know, I think, I think Aneshka has been training for a while how to be Petra. So she's well trained. So I think it, it was pretty clear to all of us that we wanted Aneshka to be able to play Petra well. And luckily I know how to do that. So <laughs> that worked out well by now. Um, <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, it was Aneshka has to play Petra well, A, to fool the audience at times, and B, uh, it just makes it so much more interesting. It's very true. That's one thing that we can say that Jane the Virgin certainly is, is interesting. Interesting. Um, <laughs> um, well, congratulations on the success of season two. All of the, the praise you guys have gotten, all of the awards that we listed a half hour of. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, best of luck coming up with the Emmys, I hope. Um, oh, you guys, thank you. Fingers crossed. That would be... I mean, you're, you're already an Emmy-nominated show. Hopefully, it, it just continues and, and you guys are able to build on that. And again, I hope to talk to you uh, very soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. These were great questions.